And the title uh, tonight is Stewarding the Glory. And I, I want to say that there's a lot that could be said about the glory. And mm -hmm. so this is more like a practical manual on stewarding the, the glory. Lot, lots of people uh, could uh, talk about the glory and uh, bring in lots and lots of uh, verses, but what we're going to be focusing on today are, are practical ways of stewarding the glory of God. And, and first, it's hard uh, for the natural mind to understand uh, what the glory is, so I'm just going to give you uh, some quick illustrations, and one was in uh, John chapter 11, when Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead, uh, and he was speaking to Lazarus's sister Martha, he made this statement, he, and basically he's saying, you're going to see the glory today because I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead, and Hallelujah. this is the glory. Okay, go ahead and read this. Okay, verse 40, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And out came the man who was dead. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what brought him out? Well, it was the glory. The glory. Yes, it's the right? glory. And, and you might want to say, well, I want to look at another verse. Let's look at, John, at uh, Romans 6, 4, and we'll see how Jesus was resurrected. Read this week. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism unto death, so that just as Christ was raised up from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. Okay, so here we have it, that Lazarus was raised by the glory, and uh, Jesus was resurrected by the glory, mm -hmm. and I wanted to give you a practical example. This is a testimony that we've uh, 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 shared with you before, just a practical uh, testimony of something that happened in our life. It certainly affected both of us, and uh, that is um, in... Uh, 1992, uh, the doctors told Sherry she had no more than six months. She would be dead in six months. And uh, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but I, I just want to say that the Lord told me I was about to teach a six-week series on healing. And, and my wife just got a report from the doctors that mm -hmm. she's going to be dead in six months. And uh, so don't think that cause you to tremble and stand before people and say that Jesus heals today. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, what I, what he told me to say, and this was a few days before I actually started the series on healing, he said to tell them that the doctors say she's going to die, but I say she's going to stand and declare she was healed within this six weeks period. And so I said that to the people. My knees were trembling when I said it. Uh, but I went ahead and, and taught, and then the glory fell. And I want Sherry to explain right. what happened when the glory fell on her. I was sitting on the front row and and listening to, to Brother Fred, and all of a sudden I felt it was like hot oil. Begin, it started at the top of my head and ran down all of my body, all the way down to my feet. And then I was not imagining or, or having a vision, I was literally lifted off of the pew. And I knew at that time that the cancer was leaving my body. I could feel, literally feel it leaving and it, it all of it left. And then gently uh, the, the Holy Spirit set me back down on the pew. And uh, and I did stand and declare that I was was healed <laughs> within, and, um, within the six weeks period. Right, exactly. No, because that's what exactly. Jesus said. Hallelujah. And that was the glory. He said, "That's the glory that raised her up, that healed her. That Amen. was the glory." And, and so again, uh, what is the glory? Well, it's the presence of God, and it's yes. it's uh, His yeah. fire uh, falling, and and uh, uh, the just the very action of the of the presence of God uh, so the presence of God in action that's that's the glory of God and, and so now we're going to move into stewarding and, and there are basically four points I want to talk about and the first is that you are a carrier of the glory mm, hallelujah. And, and you can increase the glory and, and you can uh, 
You need to guard the glory and you can release the glory. And, and so let's just focus then on first on carrier. We're carriers of the glory. Well, one of the things I want you to know about Jesus, uh, and this is from Hebrews uh, chapter one, and I want Sherry to read this, that he is the expression of God's glory. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. He's the radiance. He's the expression of glory. So everything he saw Jesus do, he was doing it by the glory of God, by the presence of God. See, he never uh, performed a miracle until the Holy Spirit came upon him. him and the heavens were open over him. Hallelujah. And then he began performing miracles. And he was the radiance of the glory. Now, where is Jesus today? When you might say, well, he's, he's ascended and he's on the right hand of the Father. That's true. But he's also in you. <laughs> because when you accepted him as Jesus Christ, he's in you. And so let's look at Colossians 1.27. And we'll find out where the glory is. To whom God willed to make known what the wealth of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles the mystery that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, hallelujah. So you are a carrier yes. of his glory. Uh, it's Jesus yeah. and it's Christ, Christ within you. That's the hope of glory. So where is the glory? It's in you. You are a carrier of the glory, but it doesn't end there. We, we can do different things. We can walk out of the glory. We can go away from yes, the glory. You yes. got to know about the glory. But but the positive side and the good thing is you can increase the glory. Oh, and that's what, what I want us to, to look at. Uh, how can we increase if we're going to be a steward of the glory? See, a steward is going to be active. It's going to be managing. It's going to be taking care of recognizing the glory that we carry and, and then doing something about it. That's a steward. It, 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 a steward watches over and cares for that glory. The, and so I'm going to ask Sherry then uh, to read this uh, a verse, uh, 2 Corinthians um, 3.18. But we all with unveiled faces looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the spirit. So we can increase in glory from glory to glory to glory, a uh, higher. And how, is, how does it happen? As we're, as we're looking in the word of God, as we're looking at Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will take us from glory to glory to glory. So we can increase. So being a steward of the glory, you've got to be increasing the glory. It's not just enough to say, oh, I, I've got the glory. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he wants us to be transformed yes, amen. by that glory and be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Now, that's exciting. Now, I, I know that we all know this, that we can praise the Lord and worship him and, and we'll uh, increase the glory. So I want to we want to make sure that we cover this point, and this is from uh, Second uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter five, verses thirteen and fourteen. It says, uh, "He indeed is good, for his kindness is everlasting." Then the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not rise to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So, so here's a way to increase the glory praise and worship the lord because what is the glory it's his presence and, and see when we cry out to him when we seek him then he's going to come it says draw near unto him and he will draw near unto you that is a promise that Amen. is exciting when you praise him when you worship him he comes down and, and i believe uh david knew it and he said uh we in He's enthroned on our praises. Amen. So it's about the presence and inviting the presence. Now, we're going to talk about some practical ways that uh, Sherry and I have uh, uh, increased uh, the glory in our lives. <clears throat> and I want to say that the foundation for our ministry has been chapter 58. Of uh, Isaiah. Of Isaiah, chapter 58. And, and 
what it says in there that it's not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and that you break every other. So that's what we've been doing. That's what we've been doing over our ministry for uh, well over 40 years. Uh, and uh, But the other parts of the, of the uh, passage of Isaiah 58, it talks about that we need to be led by the Spirit of God and, and find the fast and find the uh, Sabbath rest. And, and, mm -hmm. and so when, the, when you do those things, when you do those things, then what? Your light brings forth your healing yeah, springs from uh, and the glory oh hallelujah it says your righteousness shall go before you and the glory shall come behind you and guard your uh behind you and so the glory so when you begin to do these things and so these are some of the things we're going to talk about some of the things that that sherry and i do on a regular basis we we uh, take communion every day mm -hmm. we recognize uh, the bread and the the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And so when we're taking communion, we're partaking, we're partaking of his body and of his bread. And so it's a, it's something spiritual and we do it every day. And I know some of you do that as well, mm -hmm. uh, but something else that, that's really uh, exciting to us is that we have, we have had designated days of rest uh, just like the Sabbath. Now, we don't want to do those religiously and, and do the same things that uh, religious uh, people do. And, and I've given you this example that uh, if you went to Israel today, uh, people uh, could not uh, push the button on an elevator, but if somebody else pushed the button on the elevator, they could all run into the elevator and they could ride it up, but, but they couldn't push the button. And, and so I'm not talking about religious kinds of things, but the way Sherry and I operate, we have a designated day of rest each week. And we believe that the kinds of things that we've been doing and seeking God, that it has caused uh, more glory to come into our lives. And, and uh, I want to start by saying we received a testimony uh, this week uh, of a woman, and I hadn't told you this before because it's just come in, a woman uh, who a few weeks ago, Sherry was uh, ministering uh at a place and and a woman came up because she had a cyst the doctors had seen in it. her in her abdomen in, in her abdomen a cyst and uh i asked sherry for prayer and sherry prayed for her well the woman fell down uh she fell down and she and later she kept saying sherry push me down sherry push no, me she down. said sherry hit me oh, hit and me. i fell on the floor <laughs> that's what she said but, but the report came back which is true <laughs> i did hit her and she did fall on the floor but what happened this week she went to the doctors and the doctor said oh there's no cyst there there's there was nothing there <laughs> hallelujah we don't understand it where, where could it have gone we saw it we've got pictures of it yeah. but, but it's gone <laughs> Well, that's the glory. That's the glory. And, and uh, we just give the Lord uh, all praise and honor for that. Amen. But Sherry's had a couple of uh, wonderful encounters uh, in the last uh, two or three days that I want her to give you any, uh, a testimony and tell us what, what happened. Well, last Friday was a designated rest day for us. And we were before the Lord and um, the Lord... Now, this was not a vision. This was not a dream. The Lord took me to a Chinese village. And I smelt the smells. I was walking on the little street of the little village. The little people were there with their little hats on. And some of them had fishing poles. And <clears throat> some of them were loading up carts. I did not see any vehicles. So I knew that I was in a time period that was not a current time period they were loading up their carts with grain and different vegetables and and the horses and the uh, they, they were taking the carts down the street and then in front of me I saw a dog I saw a rooster and I saw a fish that was just flopping around on the pavement it was a huge fish it was a huge fish and so I said Lord you know what is this what am, what am I seeing? Where am I? And he says, I've taken you here. And these are three things that I want you to know. Well, I thought these were all for me. I thought this was, uh, this was, 
uh, the three things that I saw, the dog, uh, the rooster, and the fish were all concerning me. And he said, the dog represents comfort and hope. The rooster represents the timing, my timing. And the fish flopping around on the, on the pavement represents provision, that I will always make provision. And so, like I said, I was thinking, well, this all relates to me. And I was rejoicing over that. And then all of a sudden, I was back uh, in, the, in the room where I was originally. Uh, and then the Lord shared with me that these three things that I saw were for the people, for the Chinese people that God wants them to have comfort and hope, that God wants them to know the timing and the seasons that they are in, and he wants them to know that he is their provider. And so he dropped inside of me a desire uh, to, to pray for those Chinese, um, especially the believers in China, uh, the pastors, the ministers of China, and that are preaching the word uh, that I that I am to uh, uh, begin to earnestly and diligently pray uh, for those those individuals, and I believe that the Lord is going to open up some other doors uh, in that area. And, and that how was, are you to pray? Pardon. And how are you to pray? And for how their, for their comfort? For their comfort, for their hope. Uh, for the timing, like I said, and for that, that for their provision, Amen. that all the provision will be made for them. Amen. And then something else I want to tell you about Sherry, if, if you've been around her for very long, you know that she believes to be translated, uh, to go from one place to another by the Spirit of God. If he did it for Philip, he does it for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you might say, well, uh, that'll never happen to me. To me, well, it probably won't. But, but Sherry's been believing for that, and and it and it's happening. Now she also had an encounter with the Lord this morning. Yes, and I want her to share that because I did not have a message this morning. I did not have a message for the people this morning, and I got up very early, and I just sat before Him, and I began to cry, and I began to cry out to Him, and I said, "Lord, you know you." You know what you want to say. You know what you want to say. And I just receive it right now. I receive it right now. And all of a sudden, I felt the presence of God all around me. And I felt a hand on my right shoulder. And I knew that that was my father. And I knew that he was there. And all of a sudden, he just began to download. He just began to share with me his heart, what he wanted to say that be said and and it was I give him all the glory for that I give him praise for that uh because when we know nothing he knows everything Hallelujah. and so I, I do I give him praise for that but I do believe and I told brother Fred this that setting aside these times just to be with him uh, to Forget about your agenda. Forget about your list. Forget about uh, what's what's going on, and just saying this is the time that I'm going to uh, specifically designate. You know, and I know the presence of the Lord is with us always. You know, and you're driving down the road, the presence of the Lord is there. But but I do believe that when we say to Him, you know, I'm setting aside this time. It's like going to someone's house is like going to, you know, Sister Becky's house or Cindy or, 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 you know, someone else. And, and you're, you're setting aside that time uh, to be with that individual. And that's what we need to do with the Lord. If we want to increase in the glory of God as carriers of the glory, then we need to set aside that time and say, here I am, Lord. You know, I know nothing, but you know everything. And so just just give it to me. You know, just release it in me. 
uh, in the name of Jesus. And so I want to say something right here about Japan, because I know that Nalco and Jonathan uh, love Japan. And, and, and I do love Japan as well. But I believe that God has given the two of you a heart for, for the people uh, that, that are there. And so I encourage you tonight uh, to follow your heart, to be diligent. And you may already uh, pray, but ask the Lord specifically uh, if there's something else you, you need to be praying uh, for, the, for Japan about. And, uh, and, and he will do that. He will definitely do that. And so I just say that to you. Okay. We're on the, my second point about uh, increasing the glory. And, and I want to end this part uh, by talking about the cross. And uh, because there was a great exchange and there were lots of different parts that we could talk about. But the part I want to mention here is that there's a great exchange of our shame for his glory. So Amen. you have to lay down your shame. Now, what is that? Well, it's all the time people have betrayed you, that they've uh, stabbed you in the back, that, mm -hmm. they've, that they've abused you. You have to lay all of that aside. I, you know, I listen to a lot of ministers and, and they still, they still talk about those things that have happened to them and still uh, dragging that up and, and trying to touch the hearts and uh, souls of other people. But to walk in the glory, you've got to lay those things down at the feet of, of Jesus. Jesus. And, and I want Sherry to read these verses. And let's just let's just think about this concept. Hebrews, Sherry. Okay. Hebrews 10. Another Hebrews. thing the Lord shared with me this morning was that when I die, that's when I live. And of course, that's what the that's what Jesus said. He said, when you lose your life you're going to gain my life but my father actually said to me this morning when you die you will live Hallelujah. and then i don't know about you but that that just shook me to my very core that anything i do it doesn't it it it's it's Nothing compared to what he wants to do with us. Hallelujah. What he wants to do with Paul and Pat. What he wants to do with Judy. Uh, these two, this this couple and, and Judy, uh, the children. Uh, and Haley uh, is a teacher. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The children are important to the Lord. They're our most valuable possession. Hallelujah. And so this is something that you know, it's just very close to my, my heart. And I love what Ruth has on her fearless t-shirt tonight. Look at that. Her fearless t-shirt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hebrews 2. Yes. Hebrews 2. Thank you for keeping me on track. Shut up. And surely the Lord would say this night, set up and listen, for I will speak to you. I will speak to your heart. I will show you things that you've never seen. I will give you the mystery. I will show you the way of the path of righteousness, saith the Lord. For I am with you. I am for you. Now who can be against you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I believe that we're going to hear again from the Lord tonight. The prophetic is very strong. I sense it in my spirit right here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So just get ready. But we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of his suffering death, crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for whom we all things, and through whom all are all things, in bringing many sons into glory to perfect the originator of their salvation through suffering. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus had the glory. He laid it down. He came. He walked on the earth. And, and uh, 
and he suffered such terrible death, abuse, crucifixion, and he he did all of that. He suffered all of that shame. Uh, he was up there on the cross, and I know if we see a, an image of uh, Jesus, he has a little a piece of cloth that across his middle, but he didn't have that in reality. Yeah, he was naked. He was naked. And so all of the shame, he bore all of our shame. And so it says he wants to bring us to glory. So here's the great exchange. Amen. Where are you going to get the increase the glory? To lay down your shame, to lay down yes. all your yes. betrayals, of the abuses uh, that people you. have uh, done. We've all been there. We've, Thank you, we've all suffered. We've all suffered. And, and we've been shamed. Uh, by family, by friends, by by uh, so many different uh, ways, by the enemy. We, we've suffered shame, but you've got to lay it down to Amen. receive the glory. That's the great exchange. That's one of the parts of the great exchange of the cross Hallelujah. to receive the work of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. And the walk in the glory. So you Hallelujah. need to be Hallelujah. believing believing the Lord and see this is about knowledge you need to understand how it works and that's the reason we're, we're going over in a very practical manner what you can do you lay down all of the hurts and all of the pains that people have caused you lay them at the feet of Jesus and receive his glory increase in his glory the more you lay down at the cross the uh, uh, lay down uh, all of those burdens that you've carried, all of that sin and all that shame. You lay it at the cross, the more glory you receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this takes me to the, my third third point is we have to guard the glory. Yeah. Because really you look at me. They were in the garden from the beginning. They, and were, they were clothed in, with the glory and, of God. And they were with the presence of God, walking with the presence of God, they experienced the glory, but then you had the saboteur. You had the snake come in uh, to sabotage them, to bring them into sin, to tempt them, to bring them into sin so that they lost the glory. They lost, they lost it. Uh, and, and then they were uh, removed from the garden and they were put other guards yeah. around it because God uh, is concerned and he cares for his glory. He's not going to share it with another. But now Jesus came along and he faced the same kinds of temptation that the Adam and Eve did uh, when he was in the wilderness. But let me tell you, he did not sin. He was tempted uh, and he was tempted in every way you and I are tempted. He never sinned. And, and let me just put it this way. You can you can be uh, do ninety nine percent right, and you do one one percent wrong, and the ninety nine doesn't overtake the one percent. You if you've sinned, you've sinned, and, and the mm -hmm. only remedy for the sin is Jesus Christ and the cross and His blood. And when from First John one nine, when we confess our sins, oh hallelujah, He's faithful. And he is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so don't think just because you're 99% clean that you're 100% because the 99% clean doesn't make you clean. It, you have to go step by step in the process. You have to guard. Uh, Jesus guarded guarded the glory, guarded everything that the Father had given him. Adam and Eve lost it. Uh, they were sabotaged, and, and the same plan of the enemy applies to all of us. He wants to take the glory. He wants to walk in the glory, but God will never share his glory with him. Amen. He does not share it with another, but he does share it with you because you're not another, because Jesus oh, is the radiance of the glory, and he's in you, and Christ in you is the hope, hope of glory. glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, there's another couple of verses I want Cherry to read. This is Hebrews 10, uh, and this talks about what God does for us. It says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sins and iniquities. Now, I want to 
to, I brought this up because I want to talk about this. We've got to deal with these things. Mm -hmm. Sins are the things that we do. You know, it says Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. That's what we did. But he was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquities are something different than our own sin. It may be the sins of our ancestors, the sins that are in our bloodline. But we have to deal with both of those. Yeah, what, what did it say there in that last verse about sin? He'll forgive us. He'll and their, forgive sin. their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Okay, so we've got to, we have to deal with those. This is something we guard against. Uh, not only our sins, but we've told you how to, to deal with that. That's 1 John 1, 9. Confess your sins. Okay, but now iniquities are something different. And uh, I want you to think about Daniel. When Daniel realized that it, the 70 years of exile for the nation of Israel were over with, uh, you might think, well, he's just rejoicing. He's going to rejoice because obviously uh, the nation's going to go back and be restored to Jerusalem and, and to Israel. But no, you know what he did? He, he started praying and yeah, interceding yeah. and confessing the sins of his forefathers. And it wasn't what he had done. He's concerned about the iniquities now. He's dealing with the iniquities. Mm -hmm. We all have them. We all have to deal with them. I want to give you just a quick example yeah, here. Please do. Quick example. Yeah. Uh, you know, Malachi says, don't rob God. Uh, because if you rob God, and then I'm talking about in tithes and, and offerings, if you rob God, you'll be cursed with a curse. And so there's a curse from not tithing. Now, what is the curse of not tithing? It's poverty. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to just think, I'll just use myself as an example. See, I had two parents. I had uh, four grandparents. I had eight uh, great grandparents and 16 great great grandparents. <laughs> Hallelujah. What if all of those people uh, tithed? Oh, man, I would be blessed. They would have been blessed all of their lives, and I would receive those blessings, all of those people. But what if one of them sinned? and didn't tie, that would bring a curse on me. Any of those, my two parents, four grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents. Is there one of, if just one of those persons, one of those ancestors of mine did not sin, I mean, did not tithe, they would bring a curse of poverty on me. Now, I, I only knew two great grandparents. I didn't know you, I even know any of my great great grandparents. Uh, two great grandparents. I didn't know them. And, and so, did they sin or not? I'll tell you, they sinned. They didn't die. Uh, there might have been one in there that did, and I hope there was, but I, I'd say that a lot of them didn't. And that brings a curse on me, curse, of, curse on my family if I don't break it off. That's the reason we need to guard against iniquities. Because iniquities, see, what that what iniquities means really means no equity. Or in other words, no profit. No, oh, no. Yeah, talking from an economist. No <laughs> profit, no <laughs> equity. Oh, you don't want, you don't want that pro iniquity in your family. That's you, right. You, you, and this is just one item. I mean, it could be seen in a lot of different ways. Could be immorality, could be murder, could be uh, witchcraft, abortion, abortion. abortion. All, any of those things. And I'm just using po poverty and tithing uh, as, as one example, but it could be in any of those examples. You have to deal with your uh, iniquities. And, and I know Lisa has uh, talked about that uh, and that we have to clean our bloodlines. And it's important for our bloodlines to be clean. Because life is in the blood. And so you think about Daniel. What did he do? He began to confess the sins of his ancestors. You need to confess the sins of your ancestors and ask for forgiveness. Because God then will remember them no more. Woo! That's a promise. Uh, yeah. And we need yeah. to guard against sins and iniquities. We need to guard against our own sins. And, and I've told you how to deal with that, but now I'm telling you, you need to deal with the iniquities. And, and so you need to be in the presence of the Lord, finding out what did, mm -hmm. did what did uh, my ancestors do, what kind of sins, what they did. I'm, I'm going to confess it, get it under the blood, under the Hallelujah. blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, and I'd like to say while we're on this area here that the the Lord revealed to me, I have, I have a lot of... Um, uh, women uh, who 
come to me who are trying to have a child, have a, have a baby. And, uh, and so I have prayed in, in different ways uh, for them, uh, for their wombs to be strengthened, like uh, Sarah's womb. Uh, I've prayed in different ways. But the Lord revealed to me the other day that there may be some that come for prayer and they want to get pregnant. They want a child. But in their ancestry, in their uh, forefathers, uh, there's been someone who has committed uh, abortion. And, and that's, you know, that's murder in the eyes of God. And that I was to uh, come against that uh, murdering spirit and cast it off of them so that no longer will they be hindered in being able to have a child. And so this, this is something that, uh, you know, we, we need this for ministry. We need to be able to help people uh, recognize and, and, and know what to, to do uh, with these uh, uh, curses uh, that might be uh, hindering them from receiving the blessings of God and being profitable uh, for the kingdom. And, uh, and so as leaders, uh, you know, this, this is extremely important because the enemy, uh, as Brother Fred has said, does not want you to walk in the glory. Right. He does not want you to walk with, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. That's good, Sherry. That's really good. Okay. Now, this is my fourth point. I'm bringing it, a message to a conclusion, and that is, uh, what is the end, end game? The end game, this is back at uh, 2.14, uh, where God wants the knowledge of the glory to cover the earth as the waters, waters cover, cover the sea. I want Sherry to read this. That's in Habakkuk 2.14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Okay, so you're beginning uh, to operate in the glory. I want you to operate in the glory and be a part of this end game. And the end game is to bring the knowledge of the glory. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do it. And, and don't think it, it has to wait until everybody's doing it all over the world. You can begin with your house. Right. You can do it with you. Begin mm -hmm. to bring the glory there. Oh, begin man. to bring the glory well, over your home, over your family, over your neighbors. So bring down the glory. It's about the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the final point I want to make is again from Isaiah 58. It tells it there is how to bring forth the glory. All of that chapter, do Isaiah 58. That's what we've been doing, uh, trying to Amen. do for uh, 40 years or more. Mm -hmm. because he told us to read that chapter every day for a year and we did out and, loud and, and so we've been operating in that and to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burden to let the oppressed go free and then your light is going to shine forth and so this and is the final verse Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2 and this last point is about releasing the glory that that's within you he we uh, the father wants you to release it Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There it is, how simple it is. He's just saying, do it. Just do it. Let, yeah. let your light shine. Well, for more detail on it, meditate on Isaiah 50. Yeah. 58. Okay, I'm over Sherry. Thank you for being here today. On Saturday morning when I, I woke, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, this is the day of the uprising. Hmm. This is the day of the uprising. Now, an uprising is is a small revolt. It's, it's uh, not really a, a true rebellion, uh, but it can turn into one. And an uprising is, is something that People are, they're dissatisfied uh, with something or they've been hurt or abused or uh, something has been corrupt and they don't like it. Uh, that's, that's the natural definition of uprising. Uh, but the Lord said, this is the day 
of the uprising. And so I said, okay, Lord, hallelujah. And this is the scripture that came to me, arise and shine and, and the glory is going to come upon you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And I do believe that. I do believe as we arise and shine and let our light shine, praise the name of Jesus, then, then that glory is going to be seen and people are going to be drawn to that glory. People are drawn, you know, to, to the glory of God. They're drawn to light. They're like little moths and little flies, and and they are <laughs> and they are drawn to to that light. Hallelujah! And so we want you to release your glory. We want it to, you know, that's one of the things that we pray when we take communion. We re, after the after we take the communion, we remember the body of Jesus and what He did in that body, and we remember the blood of Jesus and what the blood does. And then we release, we release the energy of God in us. We release the power of God within us. And we release that glory so that others can see uh, the glory of the Lord. 